In order to assemble the micro tin, you will need a micro tin kit, which is like that. Uh, you will need the download instructions, which you can get from our website. And uh, you will need something like this little block, which I use for folding the aluminium. A pair of long nose pliers, because come in handy. Uh, a good uh, posi drive screwdriver of a double O range. And uh, a servo. This is a Hobby King HK15178, but you can also use the Tower Pro SG90 or MG90, they will work fine. You'll also need uh, a little servo tester, like this little one which I bought from eBay, with a little power supply on it. This is uh, just a little battery pack. You can stop. Before we start, uh, open the packet and make sure that everything is included in the kit. The, the back page of the instruction sheet will give you a list of all the bits that you need to put the unit together. So having made sure that you've got everything, the first thing we do is to bend the pieces. I would start with the main frame, which is this one here, and that section at the top there is what we call the foot plate. That is going to be the part of the servo motor which is screwed up underneath your baseboard or if you're mounting on top then it would be screwed down from the top onto the baseboard. So first thing we do is we line up that dotted line there on the edge of the uh, the fold on the, on the edge of, a, of the bench or onto the edge of a uh, bending jig and then holding this top section very tightly we just fold that down, just push it down by hand. It goes very, very easily. And this is in Blue Peter style, one I did earlier. Um, that is folded down like that. That bend is exactly 90 degrees and it fits very well. One thing I forgot to mention it's always good to make sure that the two arms there will slide through those two slots uh, easily and make sure there's no swarf or pips or anything on the way of that sliding easily. You can check both sides to make sure that that all fits very easily. Right, having done that, you've got your first fold. Now you need to fold the two wings down but in the opposite direction to the way you folded the foot plate. So again I line it up onto the, um, onto the bending jig and I just push down like that, turn it around and push down on the other side now you will see that the two arms don't fold all the way down, uh, even if you do fold it up against the block. It's important that that isn't quite closed up, so we can, we can nudge it a little bit more, but uh, basically that is kind of what you want to be left with. The other thing we need to fold is the uh, slider. Now the slider looks like that, you've got four holes over there for screwing, I uh, putting little screws in to hold the uh, actuator wire and this little piece at the bottom here folds down and that's what operates the switches. Now <clears throat> I would suggest that you hold it in that for format with the bulk of the holes towards you and put that on the edge of the block like that and then just fold that all the way down. That one you can just nudge a bit to make sure that it's in a um, full 90 degree. As always we say don't fold aluminium more than once because if you do it could snap off and that would leave you with a broken mount. That's your slider then. The following thing we do is we take our servo motor out of its sort of packet. We won't worry about the other bits just yet, just this part and we put that into the back of the servo mount in that way like that. Now you will have two screws which are M6, uh, M2x6 uh, to put that on with. I find it's always easier to put that screw in there first. The uh, shaft needs to be at the top that's closest to the foot plate and uh, just drop it in and a quick turn of the screwdriver and that will be in. The other screw is there. And again, 
can just pop that on and screw that in and your servo motor is now fixed. Now some people might panic that this will work loose. You can put a bit of thread lock on there if you like or uh, print some of your good ladies um, nail varnish and just put a spot on each one uh, but I've never found that necessary but it did, would help just to stop the screws from winding out if there was a lot of vibration. Now the next stage that we do is to plug this unit into our servo tester and this particular one is quite useful because it has um, that way it will turn it but if you hit that button one more time it goes into the center part and that is exactly in the middle of the servo travel. Once you've done that then in this little packet you will find and one needs to be a little bit careful with these things because this little screw can go all over the place. That little black screw is the one you need and uh, that particular arm we put that onto the shaft like that and it's a little screw in there and just wind that in all the way hold the shaft so it doesn't move by the way you don't have to have it plugged into the servo motor uh, at that point in time but it's quite useful just to once you've got it on to uh, put it into a check mode and make sure that you've got a fairly even swing from one side to the other Right, in its middle position, we can unplug that and we can put the servo tester out the way. We won't use the rest of these bits that came with the servo, uh, so those can go into the scrap box. You never know when little screws would come in handy. Now we need to look at the slider. The slider comes with three little screws. And uh, they're a little tricky to put in, but I find if I put them onto the end of my screwdriver and then just run them in. Now the one in the centre there is a good one to put in first. Um, then you can take another one and put it into the corner one there. Now please note that the screws are going in the opposite side to the fold. So on the top that's going to be at the bottom, that's going to be at the top. Now the next trick you need to do I'm just going to make this one is to decide um, which way you want to operate your server. Under normal conditions we would say you put it in like that, then that would go in underneath the baseboard. So we get that. Here's the old micro eight again. Uh, that's going underneath the baseboard and that actuator wire then goes through uh, underneath your uh, turnout, your point, and goes into the tie bar and it moves it from side to side. If, however, you have a problem in that you can't uh, get in there because there's something in the way under the layout, you can put a crank into the thing. So, if I was going to do it with that way, I would put the third screw in that hole over there. However, if I'm going to use a crank, then I'm going to put the third screw in the other side, and I'll show you in a minute what that will do. I put the third screw like that, then I can use a cranked wire like that so that I can put the servo to one side of where the point is actually going to sit. This is quite useful uh, when you've got a, a, a beam in underneath your layout or a stiffener or something and it gets in the way because normally the point would fall exactly where you don't want it to fall. So that's one way of doing it. Alternatively, if you were putting the unit on top of the baseboard you might want to put in something like that uh, and that would allow you then to pull the tie bar across the top of the layout. Actuate a wire down through the centre like that and that will move from side to side. The next thing we need to look at is whether you are using switches or not. Now the Micro 10 will accommodate up to four switches. It comes in the back with two switches, one for each side, and they go on very simply. You will need a switch like that, you will need one of these two nut plates, and this is where the uh, 
the pair of long nose pliers comes in because you can just fold that backwards and forwards a couple of times and just break the two apart. Um, your switches need to sit with the, uh, the, the switch lever facing to the bottom of the mount. So what I've done here is I have mounted two switches. There's two uh, M2x10 screws with the switches and the nut plates at the bottom. These nut plates are very useful because you don't need to hold a spanner or anything at the back. You can just loosen off the uh, screws like that and you can then slide the switch in and out to wherever you need it to be. Um, you can mount as many switches as you like within reason. Uh, if you want to mount uh, two switches one on top of the other then you will need to buy a long screw multi-pack from us which will give you the longer screws uh, and you'll be able to put two switches one on top of the other with the same nut plate at the back. Once you've got the switches on make sure that they're all the way to the outside edges. That's to make sure you don't break the unit while you're trying to get it all set up. So push the switches right to the end, lock them up just gently and then we can start fitting the slider. Now the slider is a little tricky to get in but because we didn't fold those two all the way up we can uh, little clip it in from one side and uh, slide it through. Like I said it's a little tricky. Make sure the switches don't get in the way. I think that's what I've got here. Move that switch a little bit. There we go. Into there and then come back into the other side. There we are. And once that's in we can then just fold that up to 90 degrees. And the unit is then trapped within that. Now obviously it's not going to work like that because that's not connected to the shaft of the servo motor. So what we need to do now is we need to put a little screw through that hole and into the holes on the servo. If you look there you'll see there's a string of little holes down there and the hole at the top is the one I would suggest because that gives you the minimum amount of movement for the maximum swing of the servo which does tend to make it easier to set the end points because if the servo does kick a little bit one way or the other it's not going to do too much damage. The further you go from the centre out, the more travel you'll get, but obviously the unit is limited to a 10mm travel, so you don't want to go too far down. Otherwise your server is not really going to move much and you'll be swinging wildly uh, at the top. So I suggest you go into the first or maybe the second hole uh, at worst case. In the kit there is a little screw, uh, which is uh, a 1.7mm screw, about eight millimeters long and this is the trickiest part of the whole uh, thing is to get that screw uh, through the slot there and into that. So there she goes into that screw. Don't screw it all the way home uh, because if you look very carefully underneath here we don't want the screw to touch onto the body of the motor so about halfway in will be fine and uh, that will then be in the right place. Now our mount is virtually complete. Uh, a final test on the uh, servo tester and you will see that she moves nicely from side to side. Now the only thing you've got left to do is to use the two fixing screws and screw it up through the base there you will notice there's a difference uh, between the Micro 8 and the Micro 10 in the slots. We have extended the slots right to the edge of the plate so it makes it easier not so much for installing but if you need to take a motor out to ch at least a unit out to change the motor that is, you'd only have to take out one screw, loosen the other one and then slide it out. It makes it a lot easier to do. Um, those two screws will then hold that up you can use one of our Micro 8 or Micro 8, Micro 10 um, drill jigs to enable you to find the position of the holes on the layout relative to where the pin position is in your mount. Um, like I said, then all you need to do is to put the actuator wire down there. I suggest you lock up the middle one first. Don't worry about the other two. 
put it up underneath the layout and then adjust the height. If it's too long you can cut it. Uh, you can cut it with a strong pair of side cutters or you can cut it with something like a Dremel friction tool. Um, and once you've got it to the right height, lock it in position and then just lock up the other two screws to hold it. And that will do the trick. Then you can set your two end positions uh, using your control circuitry. And once you've got your end positions in place, then it's just a question of uh, slacking off the switch slightly and moving it until the switch operates, just to operate and then locking it up into position. And then your switch is there. There is a, a detailed picture on the web of the connections to the switch and you can then solder some wires onto those pins and use them for whatever reason on your layout. And that is a micro tip. I hope you'll have lots of fun using them and please let me have any feedback you might have so that we can always improve. Thank you.